everyone, I'm Madeline from the New Cyber Institute. Today I'll be going over some helpful things to know when doing online CTF or capture the flag competitions. All of the tips will be based on interactions with web pages. Now, the most basic but useful way to gather information is to look at the source code of a website. This can be done by right clicking and selecting view page source. Here you're able to view the basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript behind the website as well as the general structure. And what's in green are usually the comments. Comments are not actual code that runs, but rather things to help the reader of the code make sense of it. For any CTF competition, checking the source code is a great first step. In the source code, you actually want to look for comments. Sometimes this is where valuable hints can be hidden. Also, look for links. Seeing where those lead to or what types of things are linked can also be helpful. Now, in terms of these large chunks of black text that you might see, you might not always have to worry about those since that is where the JavaScript and CSS usually is. So unless you have a specific reason to look there, you can probably scroll past it. Sometimes though, you can see in those sections if password checks are being done, which is definitely something that you might want. What are called cookies are another important part of the website browsing experience, so it might be worthwhile to investigate those. In the simplest sense, a cookie is a bit of data that's sent from a website and stored on the user's computer by the user's web browser while the user is browsing that page. So they help the website store information about each user, and the cookie themselves uh, contains a name and a value. You likely recall getting a pop-up on a recent site you visited asking for your permission to use cookies since most sites do. And there are actually a few different types of cookies. The main types are session and persistent. However, I'll focus on session cookies for the moment. So session cookies are created temporarily in your browser while you are visiting a website. But once you leave the site, the session cookie is deleted. Something called session guessing can be done if the value of a session cookie is not randomized properly. You want to look for a pattern in the value assignments of each cookie. For example, does every time someone log in the value increase by one? If so, you can use this pattern to your advantage and you can try to edit the cookie to have a specific value of the person who logged in before you, for example. But where can you look for information on cookies? In the few challenges I've completed in online CTF competitions, sometimes the information can be found at the top of the browser if you're working in an artificial environment. However, more likely you're going to have to look in other places, for example, the HTTP header. HTTP headers let the client and server pass information to each other with an HTTP request or response. This can also be known as communication between the front end or back end, or the part a user sees and has control over versus the side they have no control over. This side includes the database. There are probably a few downloadable programs that could locate such headers for you, but you can also just right click the page and select the inspect option. At first, the page might be blank, but it will no longer be blank after you begin interacting with your browser, so clicking buttons, moving your mouse, etc. The inspect option is super useful, and I definitely recommend digging around to see what other tabs could have information that would be helpful in completing a CTF challenge. As you can see, right now I'm just poking around the Neo Cyber Institute site, and you can see what code corresponds with which elements. Also, you can actually edit the code here as well. Don't worry about doing this because whatever changes you make here will not be visible to other people, nor will it actually change the site itself, but it might help you to get where you need to be for the competition. Now, secret files or ones that are hidden at first glance might be of interest to you. For example, the robots.txt file. This file tells what are called search engine crawlers, which pages or files the crawler can or cannot request from your site. So in competitions, this file can often be a list of all the secret web pages that the owners of the website don't want you to find. And to access the page, you can usually just add slash robots.txt into the URL. This actually points to the importance of the URL in a CTF competition. You really want to pay attention to them because usually there's going to be a way to manipulate it if you're looking to be taken to a hidden or different page from the one that you have access to. So much can be done with hidden files in CTF competitions, so you want to try and look for more besides just robots.txt. Specifically, you want to look for the subdomains of the website you're on. Now, a subdomain is indicated by the slash in the URL. This means that you're inside some sort of directory. 
and there are many ways to access such subdomains. One way is the Kali Linux tool called Knock. And now when seeing what subdomains this finds, you want to browse your options to see which seem to be useful. And like the robots.txt file, you can just attach the name of the subdomain with a slash to the end of the URL. And I found that slash PHP or slash PHP my admin might be of interest. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and comment down below what you want to see next. I'm Madeline from the Neo Cyber Institute. I'll see you next time.